Hi, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so this is uh, Saturday at 10 a.m. I don't know why they decided this, I guess because we're all over and they thought it would be funny. Um, so this is uh, about the Oculus Rift. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to introduce each other and then we'll talk a little bit about the Oculus Rift uh, and then take some questions and stuff, because I guess because we didn't prepare anything, just we have Oculus Rifts. <laughs> uh, so my name is Bobby Blackwolf. Um, I actually am, I'm a programmer by trade, but I haven't done anything with uh, Unity and the Oculus Rift, so any technical stuff I get to pawn on them. But uh, I've been a journalist covering the Oculus Rift, and there a few independent journalists actually covering it. So I've been seeing what works, what doesn't. I've seen a lot of the experiences currently made by the Unity community and uh, stuff like that. So that's kind of where my, uh, where my focus has been, is what works, what doesn't, and things like that. So that, that's the... My name is Ray Smith. Um, I'm a computer science major at the University of Georgia. Um, and I got into VR last semester when I took a virtual reality class. And it was pretty intensive. And the Oculus was um, actually, it, it came out right after that class. And so it was like, hey, you know, I'm taking this class, so I might as well get one. Um, we used uh, Unity extensively in that class. And um, currently I'm working for IS3D. They're actually doing a panel at the same time, which is unfortunate. Um, but we use Unity extensively in that, so I'm James Gibson, um, also a computer programmer. I work in the cello services industry primarily, though. Uh, this is just a hobby. Um, but uh, my background is mostly uh, open source software so stuff, so I've um, dealt with this a little bit with the uh, 3D and uh, coder. Yeah, see, I'm a computer science major from UK too, so go ahead, let's go off. Um, so, anybody here not know what the Oculus Rift is? Okay. So, since a couple of people were raising their hand, basically, this is a virtual reality headset. Uh, this is currently a development kit, uh, and it's the, the reason this works and things like the VFX1 headset in the 90s or the stuff I used to see in Dave and Buster's with the Velociraptor thing. Uh, this works because the head tracking actually is very low latency and uh, it is one to one. So, like when you're you're not it's not going to come across here, but when I turn this, it is one to one. You feel like you're actually looking through, uh, looking into another world, and uh, that that's where it really shines over the previous attempts. And uh, another thing that they did that I think helped tremendously. Um, typical approaches to head tracking in VR, there's a, there's a point that you have to rotate around, and typically it's set directly behind the eyes, where it's like the whole head is rotating. But what they did was they actually put the point of rotation where it would be at the base of the skull. So when you rotate your head down, it, it's actually rotating as it would in real life. So it, it reduces a lot of the, the problems that you see. Yeah, it doesn't break immersion, and that's the key to doing anything in VR is not breaking immersion. The third thing that they actually did is to greatly increase field of vision. Mm -hmm. um, it's what, 110? I don't know what that is. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's 100 something. And it's well, 110 degrees. Virtual to 90. Yeah, for yeah. So, yeah, and so that's, and the way that it works, just from a, you know, so what you're seeing. This is actually what is being shown. This is actually acting as a second monitor. It's actually a screen that looks kind of like this. It's actually mobile technology that made all this possible. Uh, and so it's warping what it's sending to this, and then the two lenses are unwarping it, and it makes it, your eyes feel like they're looking into infinity. And that's how it gets kind of that field of vision, the immersion. So, and also one thing, I'm gonna put my comic book guy glasses on for a second, and you know, snort and pull them up, because I, I hate it when everybody called it, and I know you guys did it, but uh, I hate it when people call it the Oculus because we don't call it the Microsoft, we don't call it the Sony. It's the, that's the company making the Rift because they want to make other products too. So that's my comic book guy. So, um, so 
So you guys, so how easy is it to put it into Unity? Like how, like if you know Unity, how easy is it or how difficult is it to put stuff in? Well, it's actually pretty easy. They have a um, plugin yeah. that basically you just you just use their plugin. It's very simple. Is that for Unity Pro? Yes. Yes. Yes, because it uses some shaders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it is, the warping effect is actually a shader effect, and that's only available in Unity Pro. But if you get the uh, developer kit, it comes with a four-month trial. And these developer kits, they're low res. They're, it's 1280 by 800 is the native resolution. Um, and uh, it, the pixel density is not that great, so you can actually see each individual pixel, but really, you don't notice it after about five minutes. You're like, there's no screen door effect anymore, but, but it's there. Uh, the consumer version is, they're saying Q3 or Q4 2014, maybe. Uh, and they, they're aiming for at least 1080p in each eye. Uh, because right now this is 1280 by 800, but it's split in half. So it's 640 by 800, 640 by 800 in each eye. And uh, it needs that high depth. I haven't played with that before. They haven't played. Anything else you guys want to add before we go to questions? Not particularly. All right, your turn. Give us content. Anybody? Question. You're okay. saying that they put the the uh, rotation point based on the skull. Is that implementation specific, or did they actually do that? In it's there? part. It's part of the plugin. Okay, that's what but, I um, You can. I mean, I have done that um, with some of my projects, um, and it works. It works very well. Uh, basically, I I actually did an experiment where I had one. Ex uh, it's the same experience, but I put the rotation point where you might expect it to be, and then at the base of the skull. And people experience significantly less vertigo because it was at the base of the skull. Because it's, it's the natural human movement. The whole, the reason people get vertigo in virtual reality is a break from what their brains expect the motion to be to what they're actually experiencing. So basically, if you turn your head and there's a lot of latency, then you turn, and then the screen catches up. Your brain was expecting to be looking here, and it wasn't, right? And the same thing goes for the position of the eyes. If you move your head, if you think about it, your eyes are actually moving the whole time. They're not just rotating. So it, you have to take that into account also. And the other neat thing that the, that the SDK does is because of you can predict movement, and it actually predicts the movement of your head like 60 milliseconds into the future, but it only needs like a 20 millisecond response time. So it knows that if your head is moving so fast, there is no way you can stop in the next 20 milliseconds. So it predicts that you're going to keep going, and that's how it keeps the seamlessness going and the immersion going. It's, there's, a, there's a lot of math that goes into this, and believe it or not, the guy that made this just turned 21. What have I been doing with <laughs> but John Carmack just joined the CTO and he's actually looking at like Android stuff for it. So that, that's a very good sign. Hey, Matt Smith, uh, Gaming Development Co. Uh, you guys really mentioned Unity to develop the uh, Does it accept other APIs as well? Okay, so the developer kit comes with C API. It's been integrated into UDK. Um, but it's just for first-person stuff. You can't do really anything else in UDK. Uh, CryEngine just announced because the Star Citizen is going to be in their engine. Um, and I can't. Are you working on some other engines? Uh, yeah, Torque, uh, the Torque 3D. So we've already got it integrated into that via the SDK. And uh, there are some integrations with Ogre, uh, which is an open source. But but it comes with C++ library. So if you're developing your own engine, you can do it. And that does the warping and the math and all that stuff. All right. For the Oculus Rift, we've been working developing for it. One thing we have like having a little problem with is the cursor. Normally in Unity, the cursor would line up in the middle of the screen, which makes it easy for like 
application like Angular where you lock on and see where you're looking at. With Unity, the cursor, you can't see it because it's in the middle, and that's in the middle of the two eyeglasses. So have y'all, is there like a widely accepted solution on how to get the cursor to center up with now two eyeglasses instead of just one screen? actually in 3D space, like on the target. So, you, so it's actually like in front of you, that way when the, the rift renders it, you know, it's actually on your target in front of you, you'll be able to see it in both eyes. Now, now that you mention it, I, I remember I actually did that in one of my projects. I was doing a, a shoot event, and basically I just I had a sphere in 3D space that was just set in front of the space. So how do you handle 2D content for GUIs in the 3D immersive scene? Because that's been an issue with HMDs yes. for years. Yes. Um, here's the thing that I'm going to first say, uh, which ties into what you just asked, but it's, if you're not going to think it does. Um, I hear so many people say, yeah, this Rift is great. I can't wait to play Skyrim in it. I can't wait to play Borderlands in it. I can't wait to play Bioshock in it. You don't want to. And the reason is because of the way it was designed. You can't see the HUD elements. Like, it sounds great. It's too far out. Yeah, because, like, when it, when it warps it, and I, I tried to get some injection drivers, which basically they sit in, they replace the direct 3D DLL, and warp it and do this, and then it maps the mouse to the head track, which is great when you're in menus and you're like, oh, oh no, my mouse just moved again. Um, but when it warps it, Anything in the lower corners, you can't read on the screen. Well, the Rift's not going to make it, make you be able to read it. So I'm sitting there trying to play Borderlands 2. I can't see my ammo. It's down here. So it's, you really need to, if you're going to make something for virtual reality, not just the Oculus Rift, but for virtual reality, you need to make it for virtual reality. And you need to think about that if it's, there's multiple different ways to do it. Um, some of them, like you, like this demo I'm running, will actually put HUD elements in the cockpit, uh, which Luna Flight does, which is on Steam right now. Um, there's another one, the, the demo that I was running that had the dubstep, uh, it's called Time Rifters. Uh, that actually has an Iron Man style GUI. So you can actually look around and like, okay, you're, you know, how much gold you have is over here, and then over here is how many enemies are left, and you can actually look around and see it, and it kind of floats in front of you. Um, and then there's other ways, you know, actually just putting the information somewhere in the world or just not having a HUD. And it's all about how you design your experience, but you have to design with this in mind. You can't act like it's just a screen that's in 3D. Yeah, I, I, would, I would agree with that. Um, I think in virtual reality, it's very important to have <coughs> integrated um, HUD elements in the world. So, like, an example is, like, the Mass Effect health bar. Which is like on his backpack. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Um, but if you feel that you need a 2D sort of overlay, um, you can do it. You just have to be aware of the periphery being blocked out. Yeah. And also, you have to move move the elements based on the interpupillary distance that's set in the rim. So. If it's not set right, then you're going to have a double image. And from user to user, everybody has a different distance. Right. So yeah, it's good. The, the interpupillary distance, basically what it is, it's the distance between your eyeballs. And you can have it uh, done by your eye doctor. They can measure it really well for you. Or there's a calibration tool that comes with the Oculus Rift that does it. Uh, this, the average for females is 62 millimeters. The average for males is 64 millimeters. Mine's actually 62 millimeters. Minus 59. 59. Right. 64. Um, and that actually affects the stereoscopic 3D. Um, so I'm, I'm going to pull out this. I also did just yeah. want to, before we get too far off of the, the previous topic there, um, 
some of the other demos that I've seen will do uh, menus, and it, the, the uh, way that I'm planning on doing it, you just have a um, rectangle that's uh, rendered in space relative to just directly in front of the vision uh, with the 2D uh, UI elements on there, map the mouse movements to that. Uh, 3D cinema, I think, does a really good job. Yeah. Uh, it's an example of that type. Yeah. And if you don't want them to be able to see past it, just make the plane big enough so that they can't, they, they can't see past it. As well. So basically, avoid Unity is on GUI at all costs. Do everything yeah, don't, and then. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. So, so, like, this game, this is uh, Proton Pulse, it's Breakout with your head. But you notice how in the world here, he's got down at the bottom your lives, what level you're on. And that's how he did his work. So th this is one way to do it, where you're integrating it into the world. And yeah, you have to look down to see it, but then you can look down and see it and then get back into the game. So that this is a very good implementation of it. Yeah, and honestly, I prefer this type of GUI anyway. Even in 2D games that aren't using virtual reality, I much prefer world-oriented <coughs> I've got loads of questions. Um, has anyone uh, done integration with other, like, um, I guess, other motion tracking for like your hands and connecting that in with the environments? There you go. So yeah, so like you can have your. All right, I'm gonna look down at my wrist and pull up my my HUD or whatever GUI thing information I might need. There it is on my wristband that's tied to the motion tracking of that peripheral. It's, it's, it's obviously possible. I haven't seen something specifically like that. Um, but I have an experience on here uh, that's called Alone in the Rift. It's a horror genre um, experience. And you, it, it has uh, really high support. And basically, this is your flashlight. So you're walking through the woods, and you've got a flashlight, right? You can point it and do all this kind of stuff. And then periodically, it'll flicker out. <laughs> so you have to <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's It's a really, really good technique. And then there's another one, Cover Shooter, which you said you didn't have, and basically it uses the Razor Hydra, which basically both of them you have absolute positioning, but he straps it to his chest, and it's a cover shooter. So now he's using just one of the Razor Hydras, the other one's strapped to his chest, and he's actually ducking behind boxes and you know doing stuff like this to get enemies without getting hit. So there, there's a lot of that going on. That was actually done in UDK. Well, this is your VR cinema. This one's a definitely, this is a VR cinema is the Tron Legacy in 3D. But the neat thing about this is I can actually like get up and walk around in the theater and sit anywhere in the theater I want. <laughs> so I can say, I want to sit right up front, and there I am. But what he did with the menu is it comes up, and it's in the center of your vision no matter where you're looking. And so it's, it's floating in front of you, and that's kind of how he did it. His menu. I like this because all the, the theater lights up with all the, the stuff, and then this is actually a 3D movie. It's in left right, and so it's actually showing me a 3D movie in a theater. Which sounds lame, but it's actually cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll show you the coolest thing I got. Okay, you ready for this? I showed you this. This is awesome. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> but see, here's the thing. There's my controller. There's the, and you can see that it's coming out of the projector there. And I, can, I can actually, I can get really close to the screen. <laughs> the screen. It's like getting really intense. Now it needs to be multiplayer with the um, Razor supports. You can smack your buddy and yeah. see that. <laughs> Hawken just uh, added alpha, alpha support for it. And um, Star Citizen is it's not out yet. It's any, any audio integration? Uh, you, you mean um, is like there all audio? Any, like, is there be any headphones in the uh, I don't think they've announced it. No, I don't think they've announced it. Um, really, earbuds are the best way to go. Having, having that immersive 
Yes. Would there be any way to This does it. What I'm, what I'm doing. Um, unfortunately, I can't. It, it's hard to demonstrate unless you're actually wearing earbuds or over your right. hands. But um, what, uh, what the the Minecraft mod? This is the one exception to the you don't want to play older games uh, because this guy actually did um, modded Minecraft to work with the Rift. So and actually, you notice what he did is he put the little item bar in real space in front of you and then so there's you know you can actually look around and see that and then you can move around and everything um and one of the coolest things to do is to pause it with the rain and look around it looks really cool um but uh but what minecraft does is it talks to mumble which is another chat server it's like control to speak and stuff like that and Mumble has 3D positioning data. And so Minecraft, if you're on the metacraft.ch server, which is the official Oculus Rift server, to not be a guest, you actually have to send a picture of you wearing your Rift, and then they may upgrade your account. But they have that working, and so you have your headphones on, and if somebody's talking, and you're straight facing them, they're in front of you. If you turn your head, their voice goes to your left. If they start walking away, it's they, they start fading out, so you have to start chasing after them. It is one of the neatest experiences that I've had. So yeah, there are people that are working on that. But that's not as much really the, the rift as it is just other stuff in the world. You can actually have that experience without having a headset. Yeah, um, immersive audio has been a thing in virtual reality basically since it became a thing. Um, because you know you can you can have visual immersion and that's all well and good, but if Cat, you know, knock something over, and you're in this experience, then you're not in the experience anymore. You're back in the world. Yeah. And that, that's one of the things also, because a lot of people are used to, you know, if you're making a game, you're like, oh, here's how I'm going I'm to do a cutscene. No, don't do, you can't think of the normal cutscene, because the first thing, going back to, oh, I want to play Skyrim in the Rift, <coughs> the first thing, what's the first thing that happens in Skyrim? Spoiler alert is that they start to try to chop your head off. So your view goes like this, but your head is not leaning that way. Breaks immersion right then. That's asking for you to fall out of your chair. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's... It's the included chop slide. Yeah. Now, there was a demo, I don't remember who did it or where, but they actually did have a, uh, a guillotine demo that okay. they were demoing somewhere, and they actually did have somebody, they had people lay down, on it, and you know you can look up and see the thing, and then they were really mean and actually had somebody behind them and actually tapped the back of their neck. I was like, I watched that YouTube video. I'm like, I'm so glad I wasn't there. I saw an interesting experience. I don't have it here um, because I think it costs money, but it looks really cool. <laughs> basically, uh, it's it's another horror genre, um, and basically. It's this series of, it's called Don't Let Go. Oh, um, yeah, I've heard about Don't this. Let Go. And basically, it's a series of sort of tests that you have to overcome, right? And you're not, I think you're like holding a button or something, and you're not You're holding to, both controls. And you're not allowed to move your hands in any way. But you have to wear headphones for this. Right, so you're, you're holding both controls, right? And so then in the world, it has you and hands on a laptop. So that's called passive haptic feedback, um, where the virtual world is depicting something that's actually in, in the real world. I did a project with a bicycle that we're swimming with. But uh, basically, there's like bees that are flying around. You can see them stinging your hands. And there's a spider that crawls <laughs> on. And, and, and it feels uh, like. You can, just, you can feel it. You can yeah. feel it. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. And it has a 3D audio, right? So you can hear the spider crawling in your ear. Crawling in your ear. You're like, oh, I lost. Yeah. And then there's like knives that fly around and like stick it. And then a velociraptor. No, we're not kidding. There's a velociraptor. Because what virtual experience is complete? Right.
<laughs> One of the other things, this is, uh, and I'm going to turn, turn the audio up for this. Uh, this is actually a really neat adventure game concept uh, that somebody made. It's called the Drifting Zone. But notice, like, this cutscene, you can look around the cutscene. Which means you may miss something that's in front of you, but... Once it gets past this, it So you start off, this, there's this cloth on your head. Can, can we hear him? No, we can't hear him. In the song. Not, you, basically, you're supposed to con converse with them with yes or no. <laughs> <laughs> it has gaze detection. It knows when you're not looking. drivers for current PC games, those you don't want to play. But if somebody remade a game for virtual reality, that's fine. Because you're still making the virtual reality experience. Um, but like taking Skyrim as is, you don't yeah. want to do it. Straight ports don't really work very well, particularly ones that have uh, graphical user interfaces because they, they don't translate very well unless they're redesigned. Right. Yeah, because there's this because this also has you know better HUD elements too. Mm -hmm. 
because one of the a lot of people are really excited for Eve Valkyrie, which is space flight. And the cockpit space flight games are really suited for this because you can because you're already seated and you you're using sticks. Um, so this one does really well because first off you can see your body. That's important. Fair. If you can see your body, that if you don't see your body, that's breaks immersion. But uh, you know you actually can see all this stuff, and that's where they put all the HUD elements. But this, you actually can look around and see different things. Ship somewhere now, and you have to look for them. It's kind of hard to play when you're like this, but yeah. when when you're actually playing it in. When you're in the rift, it's really, it seems natural. Don't kill me. But, anyway. but yeah, and that when you're like, okay, where are you? Where are you? You, know, you feel like you're in top five. It's great. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, I was uh, going to say, played around with the King Fortress 2, and, and real quickly you realize you're actually aware of how fast you move in a game. Oh, mm -hmm. and, it's uh, nauseating. It's yeah, because obviously we go from zero to sixty when we follow the runs. But uh, as a reflection, like you were saying, there's lots of horror games, and I kind of—I mean, I'm wondering what your take on um, like resurgence of adventure games and things like that um, with the Oculus. Is that going to happen, or do you think somebody's going to figure out how to do more like the Team Fortress games in it? Um, the Team Fortress type games, that sort of really fast-paced first-person shooter, um, they're going to make them. I'm probably not going to play them, um, just because it's too it's too fast for a device like this. It, that kind of speed it highlights what little latency there is, and so it it, it it's inevitable that it's going to make you nauseous. But as far as adventure games, I hope they make a legit version of like Oculus Skyrim. You know, I, that would just make my life. <laughs> yeah, I and mean, I'd love to see like Gone Home. Using the Oculus Rift, but they, they have to change some of the stuff that you have to read because it's too small. It's made for a monitor, but I think like something like Gone Home would be great on this. Um, but you can make pretty much any genre. The problem I had with Team Fortress 2 was not the implementation, because what they do is they decouple the aiming, which is great. They have keyhole aiming, so you can still move your mouse and it won't move your head unless you get outside of the center circle. Uh, but it was, I actually still couldn't see the HUD elements, even though it was made by Valve, put into the Source Engine, Half-Life 2 does it a little better because it doesn't have as much HUD. But like, I couldn't see the chat box. I couldn't read anything they were saying in chat. And that's probably because of the low resolution of this thing. But I could see my name, kind of, because I kind of know the squiggles, how it looks. And I knew they were saying bad stuff about me, I just couldn't read. <laughs> Uh, just by design, the, you know, the Rift is excellent for first-person games. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on alternative experiences like third-person or 2D side scrollers or something like that? I don't, I don't know how he knew I was going to pull this up next. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, answer one. Well. I think um, an RTS might be kind of cool. I I haven't seen one, um, but I haven't been looking for one yet. Yeah. I just thought just now that it would be kind of cool because <laughs> um, you could have this sort of like. Uh, What is that minion doing? <laughs> <laughs> this is a 2D side scroller done in the Oculus Rift, and you actually control the camera, so you can actually see all around the thing, but then you're just really moving. But you actually have to look at coins, these ones up here, which is kind of hard to do. Uh, you actually have to look. Come on, where is it? So you think something like Fez could be like a viable? It could, it's because the, the key here is that he doesn't break immersion, you're actually controlling the camera and you die. Um, but, you're actually, but you can actually see the entire world. And so you're instead, you're now the cameraman, he's actually in this big old cylinder. So that, that's, so it's it, possible, you just gotta think about it. It, it becomes almost like the experience of playing it in a 3D IMAX setting at that point. Um, you know, you, you, it's in front of you, it's 3D, but you're controlling it separately. 
Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, you said third person. I, I don't know, like, trailing camera third person. Seems like it would be weird. Yeah. Um, I, I actually built one in UDK, like a third person tech demo, kind of, where I, I built, like, the standard, I guess, like, orb kind of around the character. So you're able to use the right control stick of, a, of an Xbox controller to actually control both pitch and yaw of the camera. So like you can kind of give yourself like a really high view over the character, a really low view, or any, anywhere around. But it maintains complete head tracking at all times. And the left control stick is for the character. You know, so it's kind of decoupled from your head tracking. Uh, you can download the demo on my website and check it out if you wanted to. Um, that also reminded me there there is um, some people that are messing with uh, using that third person perspective uh, with that to actually induce an out of body experience. Right. <laughs> yeah. That, that that was something I was thinking about too. Yeah, because like you could start in first person and then like pull them out, kind of, and just kind of like really give that shock value, I guess, to the body. Yeah. Right. <laughs> One of the things that I haven't seen you mess with yet that I'm interested in, um, and I've started to play with a little bit myself, is um, the concept of size, how you feel within it. I mean, I know there's been a little bit done. I saw there was one demo, I didn't actually get a copy of it, but I had seen some footage um, where they've got everything sized like you were a child. Um, that's everything big. But um, I. I would love to see a Katamari game done with it. Yeah, uh, well, what kind of actual latency are you getting from this? Not, not just the head tracking, but like the actual uh, back of the computer, the photons. Like, or is it one or two milliseconds? Like, how quick is this thing? That, that's a big issue with VR tracking. I've seen there's always a bit of a latency. I mean, the latency of the rift is on the order of yeah, it's yeah, let's say 15. Yeah, 15 but to 20. Right around there, um, which is good. Uh, <coughs> the, the human eye can detect, I think it's like 30. Like anything yeah. under 30 is seamless, right? But the problem isn't the latency on the rip. The problem is that games, you have this stack of latency that happens. Right. So you yeah. have the rift latency, which is pretty much a standard, whatever it is, 15, 17 milliseconds. But then you have the latency of graphical processing and all the other things that the game is doing. So if you want a seamless experience, you have to manage your latency down to as low as it can possibly be. And if 30 milliseconds is what a human can detect, you want yours to be like 13 seconds. Okay. And Oculus actually did just release a uh, tester that they had developed yeah. that uh, measured the latency with, with your uh, your game experiences. Yeah, honestly, that, that, that's a fantastic product. That's something that historically has been kind of expensive to do, and they put it in this nice little film back. Yeah, cool. And it, like it comes up to one of the eyes. And yeah, it, it, it clips in to the um, lens holder. So like there's like, like exchangeable lenses on the Oculus, and it literally just clips into the same brackets. Nice, so you can really do some fine tuning uh, uh, that fine tuning latency. Great. Okay. Uh, so I guess the cool thing about VR is there's like 30 plus years worth of psychology research associated with it. Uh, have you guys been looking at this research in how you go about uh, designing your games and demos, and beyond that, are you using any of the, um, I guess, quantitative measurements that have been developed to actually analyze just how immersive one uh, tech demo experience is compared to another? Not explicitly. Um, in, the, in the class that I took, uh, we, I, I took a virtual reality class last, uh, two semesters ago, and we studied a lot of the, the historical data on uh, virtual reality experiences. And so, not so much like numbers, this, is, this worked, this percentage better than this, it's more, this worked, this didn't, this provided immersion, this didn't. Um, and you can sort of compile a list of best practices, um, but uh, not quantitative. Right? So does that list of best practices for games exist anywhere yet? 
Because if not, I think you have a very good Gana Sutra article. I think there's a thread going on the Oculus Developer Forum that's like best practices for VR right. development. Right. Uh, I don't know how in depth they go. I, I think an uh, exhaustive list of yeah. you know, things that. I think that might be a good forum article, actually. Mm -hmm. Just starting a forum article about, you know, the list the things. Don't really talk about them too much, just right. like list them so that it's a nice, yeah. impact format. That's, that's pretty awesome. There, um, just talking about resources for this, uh, the, the, the major two development um, forums for stuff there, the Oculus manages their own set of forums, and then there's a, a, web, a website called MentDC, which is actually where the people that started the Oculus um, did a lot of the, the original stuff before they created this. So there, there's and then, then there's the subreddit that a lot of people go to as well. There's uh, roadtovr.com is a good site. <coughs> covers a lot of VR stuff. So there's some resources out there and you can kind of kind of glean from that and they do interviews with developers and you know, what works, what didn't. Yeah, reading really scholarly articles like from MIT and um, Caltech, places like that, they list very exhaustively what worked in their experiments and what didn't work. Um, how, one thing that I found to be particularly immersive is um, what's called passive haptic feedback. Um, like uh, Xbox controller, that's an active haptic, right? It has a rumble, which by the way is the worst haptic ever. <laughs> <laughs> Unless the thing you're holding should be rumbling, mm -hmm. rumble's not the right choice. But the passive haptic is basically you integrate objects into the experience that are real world objects and you render those things in the game. Like for instance, I, um, I made a virtual bike ride demo in my class. And I had a literal bicycle, right, on a trainer stand. And I used gyroscopes to track the wheels and a razor hydra to track the handlebars. And it wasn't with the rift, I'm actually working on a port to the rift. Um, it was with another head, uh, head mount display. But it was really, really immersive because I had a body, right? Hands on the handlebars. When you turn the handlebars in the game, you are actually turning handlebars in real life. And it, it created a very immersive experience. So if, if you can integrate passive that, that's good. Oh. It sounds a little bit like the Paperboy demo that somebody made. Somebody did a paper, so it's the most expensive version of Paperboy ever. Uh, so you're wearing the Oculus Rift, but you're on an exercise bike. And then it's using Connect for your flinging of the news of the papers. And so you're actually looking at the houses and doing this and, and writing and writing the exercise bike. Let's go to the interview. I haven't heard of the interview yet. What's the best use of sort of user interface that you've seen so far with the Oculus Rift? I personally like the look for a certain period of time interface. Mm -hmm. um, that one works pretty well because if you don't want to select something, you just do this. And it, it makes you not select it. So like if you're hovering, maybe you have a progress bar for a selection. Yeah. Um, that, that type of thing works pretty well. Now, now, I like that. I mean, a lot of the stuff that I have will still just use like a normal menu that's, and then I'm using this to uh, talk whether that's what gallery does. Um, but like in terms of just like HUD elements, I like the Iron Man look of floating in front of you. But yeah. I particularly like um, HUD elements that are sort of like they're transparent. So you're still looking at the world that you might be playing in, but the, the, the Iron Man look basically. Yeah, now I'm loving this one back it's, up. It's surrounding you. Yeah, so you can still see the environment. Yeah. But. So this has, you know, that's my HUD. But even as I'm walking around, it, you know, you're wearing this thing that looks like Iron Man. I'm not going to really try to play this, but see now it's got, I can see how many people are remaining. 
See, and yeah. I really like this um, HUD element that's in the world, mm -hmm. that the remaining that's yeah. on the wall up there. I really, really love that that paradigm of uh, user interface. I'm really good at this game when I'm actually wearing the red. So that that was one of my favorite UIs, and they did not place in the VR jam. I was very upset. You want to know what did place in the VR jam? Check this out. I, I don't know why this placed, but somehow it did. Well, I know why. This is dumpy. It's going elephants. If you ever want to be a rampaging elephant. That's your trunk. <laughs> and so you're escaping from the carnival in suburbia. <laughs> and you're smashing everything. Do a pretty good I guess I'll have a neutral port about this. This got second place. In the VR game. <laughs> This is about four minutes long. It ends with you getting abducted by aliens. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm kidding? <laughs> yeah, I, I've never done any substances. I bet this is what it's like. And the aliens, they did something with the, with the 3D, so they look, they look weird. <laughs> it hurts my eyes. I don't get motion sick. People report getting motion sick in the red. It didn't happen to me until this game. It's really fun. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's good, it's only a four minute experience. Right. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, and there's immersive audio on this too, so like, you got these guys running at you. And if you were looking over here, you hear them behind you, and you look at them suddenly, right? Right? Is it right? Oh, I was going to try to hook the. Oh, yeah, I carried that. Ah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty true. The UI elements, if you wanted, if you wanted them, if you trying to get the uh, UI elements out of the way, I mean, like, there's nothing here, as you can see. Can you guys have the private eye one? The, uh, I was going to say, the demo on that one's pretty good because it's got, it's like, your notebook of things to do is on the other side. Oh, that's a good Let me put it to you, see it this way. That's one of the things I can see. 
I haven't brought this up yet. I'm stereo blind. I'm not, I can't see you in 3D right now. And it's because I had lazy eyes as a kid and I had, um, I had eye muscle surgery when I was like 18 months old or something like that. Um, I can see 3D in this thing. Oh wow. Oh, this, this, this is, uh, I call it, this is my corrective lens. I can't see everything in 3D, but uh, you know, like those I can see, really in the Tuscany demo, it's, uh, there's the blue butterfly, there's the sunflowers, and then there's the candles on the wall. And the first time I walked up to those candles, I just kind of sat there and stared at them for like 10 minutes. Because I could actually see the depth from the wall. And it's like, I could walk up to those candles in real life and we can see that kind of depth in it. And uh, I can actually see it in the Oculus Rift. And that's kind of one of the things I'm really excited about is, you know, one of the consumer version mock-ups had, had 3D cameras in the front. I might actually be able to look around my office and see it in 3D the way you guys do because of this, and so I'm really excited about that. Um, and But yeah, like those elephants at the end, I'm like, yeah, they're in 3D. Let's see some depth now. <laughs> so there was a hand up in the back. It was in the plaid shirt, I think you Oh yeah. Um, I was actually curious if anyone's explored it as a content creation tool, like you'd go into Maya or Max or Blender or whatever and see your object in 3D. I, I do know that there are, because I actually do real estate websites, like that's my day job. So I've actually seen that there have been help house developers actually create, like build their house and then go use an Oculus Rift to walk through their house and they're like, oh, okay, that beam doesn't work, you know, and they're actually walking through. So there are people doing that, there are people integrating CAD with, uh, with the Oculus Rift to be able to look at their 3D models. There are people doing that. So earlier you said one of the issues with uh, the Oculus Rift for the Rift was that uh, in first third shooter, for example, if you have to cut and it uh, warps it, you won't see them. So I was thinking maybe uh, some games where they have like a gun or something can maybe they can display uh, like the map animations have or the static. Right? Halo does that, doesn't it? Yeah, Halo, yeah. Halo has it on the gun, and I think Mass Effect has <coughs> some sort of a holographic thing that hovers over. Them. Yes. Uh, the Half Life Two Oculus mod actually will show it on the weapon itself when you like look at it. Okay. You have to also have the uh, Falcon mouse to be able to do that. Okay. By the way, Nomad Falcon is really cool. Yeah. <laughs> it has a uh, haptic feedback. Yeah. So, like, uh, there's a gun attachment that you can get, right, that clips into it. And so you can do this. And so you're aiming like this, right? And every time you fire, you can uh, provide haptic feedback for recoil. It's, it's really cool. And there's really now cool. a hand attachment so you can shake Hitsumi, Hitsumi Miku's hand. <laughs> of course there is. Of course there is. There's lots of stuff with this with two more. Should I pull up the one that I showed you earlier? Yes. <laughs> it's not in this menu. I have to find it in there. There it is. It's hidden. This is everything. Everybody in Japan is working on stuff. Uh, uh, <laughs> and this is like, they're like really close. Like, they're actually getting in your face, and they're like, you're in my personal space. There's her, there's her friend, and then there's this guy.
And then you're like, oh, that's kind of weird. Okay. And then you keep playing the game. And then you hear a scream outside your house. And I just said, outside my house. It's not my house. I'm in the game, but it's my house. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and so as you collect these notes, they're sort of like foretelling your future in the game. It's really creepy. And so you basically, in horror genre, a typical response to the fear is to lift up, okay, and <laughs> you leave your lights on, you do this, it's like, okay, all right, and then you go back in, right? But this double layer, this sort of inception thing that's going on made you not think to do that. Your first response was not to lift up the rift because your main focus is on the game that you're playing inside the game that you're playing. Right? No. And so whenever you would read this note, and then you'd sort of get this weird feeling like, man, the last note happened, right? This note's going to happen, right? And so uh, there was something about it sounded like a body was being dragged across the floor in the attic, right? And so you're playing. And you read that note, and you're like, all right, that crap. <laughs> <laughs> and then you hear a body being dragged across the floor in the attic. And you don't go like this. You just go like this. And you look up at this virtual ceiling and go, there's something in my attic that's going to kill me. <laughs> the whole experience is like this. And it's, it provides a level of immersion that, that I haven't seen in others that, that didn't use this technique. And I, I thought it was a really, really good idea. So, we are out of time. You want to I feel like, I'm sorry we feel like we ignored you or something. That's OK. I'm good. So we're, uh, thank you. What we're going to be doing, uh, because a lot of people haven't been able to play with these, we have been told we can take over one of the empty booths over in Salon City. Uh, so we're going to set up our rig, we're going to do something with the Razor Hydra, and I'll have some of this stuff on, and you guys can actually try them and be very nice to our equipment, because we love these things. <laughs> <laughs> so, so